And then you had the philosophy student in you coming out again, <laughs> questions of meaning. You questioned what is the meaning of this rowing experience. Describe some of that for yeah. us. I had a lot of difficulty with um, what I believed in my life um, a about living in a Christ-like way, and that's not a very competitive way. It's, um, you know, everyone is equal. You should care about everyone, you know, love the lost. And, and sports, to me, was all about <laughs> being the best at all costs, you know. And I saw that my place on the team, I was taking something away from someone else who who really wanted it as well. And I really struggled with what's the meaning of sport and what is the value in society, but even more, what's the value in my life? If I win a gold medal at the Olympics, it means I can row a long skinny boat backwards faster than anyone else in the world, but what is that value? Um, and it was actually, I, I keep a little, I have it here, a little, um, prayer journal just like I keep a workout journal and this is really valuable to me because I'll write prayers down in it because I'm not really good at praying in my head things get lost and I just don't do it so I write them down and it's really powerful for me because sometimes I'll go back and I'll have completely forgotten something I've prayed about and it will have been answered in my life in a completely different way so I was reading the book um, called The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. And I came across this um, on May 31st. Uh, this was this year, actually. And it says, let every man abide in the calling wherein he is called, and his work will be as sacred as the work of the ministry. It is not what a man does that determines whether his work is sacred or secular. It is why he does it. The motive is everything. Let a man sanctify the Lord God in his heart, and he can thereafter do no common act. And I just knew God was saying to me, like, I don't care whether you think this is meaningless. I've put you on this team, and this is, this is your meaning, and this is what you're going to do. And uh, don't worry about whether or not you don't know how this is going to glorify me. That's for me to figure out. So now take us to what it feels like to be at the Beijing Olympics. And you are waiting. You've qualified. It's been a, a big ordeal to qualify. Uh, you are just one of seven teams yep. that have made it to this final race from all over the world. What does it feel like to be in that dock waiting? I remember um, sitting in the boat and we'd finished our warm up and uh, we're waiting to go. We go um, underneath the bridge because the warm up area is a separate. Uh, part of this man-made lake and uh, I sat there and racing is a very spiritual time for me because I'm really scared usually and <laughs> great time to pray and I uh, just came to this realization that I would not have been here were it not for God. I felt so attached to that dream and I wanted to win so badly and you know, you're so focused on outcome and you've been training for outcome all this time, but I'm like, I, I used to want to be a rock star. I never even had the insight to dream this for myself, let alone thought it was possible. And my job here is to sit here and row. And whatever happens at the end of this race, I have, this is the moment I've been training for, like the, the chance to have this race. And that's a gift. And I've been given so much. And I can honestly say that I really went into those start gates with, with a lot of peace and was just ready to do my job regardless of what was going to happen on the line. And it was quite a line. This is the day that was billed as Super Sunday yep. by yep. Canada's broadcaster. It was, you know, five out of five Olympic medals that day were expected. And you were uh, the last medal to come through. And um, tell us what happened. Well, it was a very close race. And uh, the media always asks us to predict, like, well, do you think you're going to win a medal? Like, what are your chances? And I had said every time I was asked that question, it's going to be such a close race in the women's eight. So in the race, we had a great start. We were second for the first 500 meters of the race to the United States. Um, then we were third to the United States and Romania, and we were 
fairly comfortably in third and uh, really having a great race and it was a great race right to the line and um, the Dutch came through in an amazing burst of speed in the last 500 meters and uh, we ended up being beaten by by seven eighths of a second um, to, to just miss out on a medal and uh, I can say that there were feelings of disappointment when I crossed the line but it was not a disappointing race. Some of the drama includes the jacket you're wearing. It <laughs> is the podium jacket. Uh, it's sealed. It's kind of snuck to you guys in case you get to the podium and you get to wear it. And you come back kind of almost hiding the, the, the jackets because you can't wear it on a podium. Tears all around. <laughs> Tell me about recovering. Yeah, uh, it was definitely a sad moment, as you said, we'd had to give our podium jackets before the race and I felt very uncomfortable doing that because it almost seemed like a jinx, um, but everyone has to do it. And then we're all gathered in the boat bay and there were a lot of tears, you're right. Um, and you see the team manager sort of come back in and put the jackets down on the bench and so we can pick them up. And uh, we did really, really, badly want to be wearing those jackets on the podium and while we're there actually our men's eight um, are on the podium receiving their gold medal and uh, um, my best friend in the boat Ashley and I um, decided okay like <laughs> we're gonna earn those podium jackets we're gonna come back we're gonna keep training we're gonna race our national championships and if we win national championships then we're gonna wear that jacket on the podium there <laughs> and you did and you we did just recently <laughs> won the last nationals. weekend yeah yeah <laughs> in the women's fair so <laughs> a lot of people a lot of us need to learn lessons of perseverance of setting great goals and just going for them do you think that's part of god's hope for our lives i absolutely do and the thing that i mean i find is I had an opportunity to come in fourth in the world. Like, I never would have dreamed that for myself. Someone else had to look at me and say, have you thought about the national team? Because I think you could do it. And at that point, I didn't have any results behind me. I was doing well by that point on my university team. But every single time there's been something I've really wanted in my life or I thought, like, this is the way this has to work out. And when it hasn't, or I've come to the realization after that, wow, God used this to do something completely different. It's always something I never could have possibly imagined for myself. And it's so much more beautiful and so much more meaningful, even if it comes out of not achieving the thing I'd hoped to achieve. It's always been something far better in the long run. And that to me is just the power of God. It's never what we think, it's what he thinks. And you're not stopping now. You're, you're on the national team, still training. Uh, there's another Olympics coming up in your horizon in London. <laughs> but now you've begun your master's degree in occupational therapy. Why? I have been really inspired by meeting our adaptive rowing team. Um, adaptive rowing is a brand new sport in the Paralympics as of this year. Um, those, often those athletes are getting broken ribs and, and things like that from their equipment, just not... Um, restraining them properly um, and they're they're straining against the straps and breaking ribs and stuff like that and that kind of really struck a chord with me and then I also had the opportunity to um, I have been working at a bike shop very part-time for the last few years and uh, one of my friends who's an occupational therapist actually came in with a client and she said I don't know anything about bikes but can you help adapt a bike for this client and I did all that work and got really interested in what it would take to be an occupational therapist. This is to equip uh, people with disabilities to be excellent athletes. Um, well, that's the way I would really like to take it. Um, occupational therapy in general is, is helping people do the things they want to do after they've uh, maybe had an accident or have been disabled in some way. And um, it can also help people with mental illnesses, um, but it's is defining those things that we do that have meaning for us. And for me, I think sports have a lot of meaning for people. And I want people to see that they can still be doing 
these things regardless of if people have told them they can't or they have a certain disability and I'd love to be able to make that happen. Sarah Bonikowski, thank you very much for being with 100 Huntley Street. Thank you for having me.